Good morning and welcome to Christchurch Chorley Wood. My name is Mark and I'm going to bring the next of the series of reflections related to Advent this morning. The verse for today is Micah 5 verse 2, which goes as follows. But you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, who are little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose origin is from old, from ancient days. Now, that's a verse that is doubly familiar to us. Not only does it appear in Micah, but also in Matthew chapter 2. It's the verse quoted by the wise men of Israel when Herod asks them, where is he who is to be king of the Jews going to be born? Because he's been visited by the wise men by this stage and is getting very overwrought about who might replace him as king in Israel. So this link is clearly made by the Jewish wise men back in the time of the birth of Jesus, that this verse refers to the birth of the King of Israel or the Messiah. So we are familiar with it. So while it's a familiar verse, I think it also has some interesting points that will stand a little more thought. Because while it identifies Bethlehem, Ephrathah, as the place of birth of the person we know as Jesus, what those names mean is very interesting. Bethlehem means house of bread, and Ephrathah has been interpreted as meaning fruitful. So both those terms align so well with Jesus and his ministry. He described himself as the bread of life as he went about sharing the good news of the coming of the kingdom of God. And he also encouraged us to be fruitful in our lives as we live in a way that is pleasing to God. So all very positive and encouraging thoughts and shows just how much God has got things planned and under control, I think. And it's also interesting as we look at the verse itself in a bit more detail again, because Bethlehem is described as being little among the clans of Judah, or in some versions, too little to be among the big clans of Judah. So there's a great sense that Bethlehem is a small place. It's not significant as men would count significance, but rather God has declared that this is a significant place and in his good time that will become clear and the Messiah of the world will be born there. Because it's interesting to consider that this prophecy in Micah was written about 700 years before the events took place, which I think is amazing. That how, many, how much of our lives can we look back 700 years? I had trouble sometimes thinking about 700 minutes ago or 700 days ago. That's over two years nearly. So it's an enormous span of time, but God has got everything in his control. So there is this prophecy that says this small place, this insignificant place in human terms, is vital in God's economy. And that speaks to me that who we are and what we do may not look much in a worldly sense, but in God's economy can be vital and is important to him. We are all important to him in the same way that Bethlehem was and is important to us now. So this ruler of Israel will come forth from Bethlehem. And the final part of the verse emphasises that he, his origins are from old. And some of my readings suggests that this phase of from old, from ancient days, 
can be interpreted as meaning he is eternal. He is from the eternal time. So what a description of Jesus, who the Bible tells us was there at the beginning of the creation of the world. And this verse refers to him in that way, that his origins are from before time, from a long time ago, because, of course, he is a descendant of David, who was a thousand years roughly before Jesus. So all of this works together to show how God's plans work out on a time frame that it just is not our time frame. Hundreds of years, God is working things out. And I find that very therapeutic in a world that often is running so quickly that God's time frames are running in the way that he has determined them to be and not as we would like them to be. So a word of prayer to finish. Father God, help us as we think ahead to Christmas to remember that you have your time frames, your ways of doing things, and they are not our time frames or our ways of doing things. Help us to learn to walk with you in the way that you've set before us and with your time frame. Amen. <laughs>